Morning guys, welcome back to Thailand with Toon and Lee. And have you ever wondered what you're allowed to do in Thailand as a Phalang, as a foreigner, that isn't classed as work tasks that require a work permit? Well, today we've got the facts for you. So let's roll the credits. Hi guys, you've probably seen on the internet from numerous sources like uh, forums and websites and even comment sections on uh, YouTube channels of uh, well quite heated discussions of what's classified as working in Thailand and whether as a, uh, tourists or Phalang were, were allowed to do any anything. So um, opinions vary. So, last week we had a trip to immigration to do a couple of bits and bobs and uh, all the divisions were in the main office at the same time. So, what's Uncle Lee done for you? We asked specific questions to people in high places in, the, uh, in several divisions of what you're allowed to do and what you need to do um, in Thailand to make sure that you don't get in trouble with immigration police. Now over, over the last couple of years I have been asked several occasions, Lee how can you do this and do that on the farm, foreigners aren't allowed to work and I wouldn't say I fobbed people off, I always come back with the general standard issue answer of, look fella, you need to go and have a word with your, your own immigration officers. Get their, get their t take on things, uh, just in case it differs to ours. Um, but you must, must be very, very specific. Don't hide anything. Now when you're trying to find the answers to these questions, and, and they're not difficult questions, let's be honest about it, opinions vary, and one of my best mates from Australia, Baz Lohman, his famous song, if you can call it a song, because it's just him talking really, Sun Cream, uh, says you should be very careful about whose advice you take. And that rings true really when we're trying to find out the, the, the information that we need about working in Thailand, or is it actually work? So if you, if you, let's say you wanted, if you're like me and you wanted to have a bash at being a brain surgeon, you obviously need to know what you're doing, don't you? So you can go and read all the medical journals on how to be a brain surgeon. Brilliant, then you know everything, don't you? The next option you've got, guys, is to go down the boozer and ask your mates. They're all pissed up, but they know what they're talking about, and uh, they'll give you loads of advice. The next option you've got, of course, is to go online, go onto your forums, and uh, watch some YouTube videos. I can highly recommend that. Um, and uh, post some questions and look in the comment sections and that's great because a lot of these people will have read the uh, the same medical journal as you so they know what they're talking about as well plus you will get their own personal take on things third option is you could actually go to medical school and you could speak to people that are actually brain surgeons and the correct procedures how to do everything they will uh, give you their years of advice and experience and um, hey ho, you could become a good brain surgeon yourself one day. It's exactly the same principle in my book guys. So let, let's transfer that into real life because brain surgery is it's probably not the best example. So we're in Thailand or you're thinking about coming to Thailand. Uh, we don't speak Thai do we? I know we, we, we've got a bit of pigeon tie in us but we're, we're not fluent most of us um, so we've got a law from a uh, from a foreign country uh, which can be translated and it is translated on the internet of course but what you get is and this used to really piss me off um, being instructor for 11 years teaching health and safety 
you get some really high up management boffins with lots of letters after their names and they come to your course and I'm not saying you're trying to teach these guys how to suck eggs um, but they will sit there and they will quote section 3 paragraph 4 bullet point 2 the law says da -da 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 -da. and that's fine mate but how do you apply it in the real world okay it's all right reciting what things say but how does that work in real life so I had a section in our, our training courses and I nicknamed it bloke speak can we please put it into proper English so or whatever language so that your average Joe blogs can understand it if you can understand it you can apply it in real life the information that we've gleaned from our immigration office mainly concerns foreigners that are in Thailand that are married okay so we'll start off with our land here I'm obviously married to Toon the land is in her name what am I allowed to do on this land I can do anything that and this is the key phrase that helps your wife okay Guess what I'm allowed to do? And they specifically said this. I'm allowed to drive a tractor if I want. Well, that's good then. So now we can do more videos of tractors. Brilliant. I'm not allowed to touch or receive money in exchange for goods off our land. So duck eggs. If you came and bought a tray of duck eggs from us and you tried to give me a hundred baht for 30 large sized duck eggs, my hand will not take that money. I'll point you over to Toon <laughs> and she takes the money, snaffles the money uh, and puts it in my wallet. No, she puts it in her purse. Okay, so anything that you're receiving money for, do not take the money, guys. Okay, you've heard of scams in Thailand. Um, I dare say, you know, uh, it is possible for someone to try and set you up, but don't get paranoid about it. The next thing that you must not do, and this was quite a sad story. Let's say that yesterday I was tractoring down here, and then today, here, they wanted to burn this sugar cane off and, uh, and, and cut that ready for collection. This is not our land, this side. If I went in there and started helping out in there, even if it, I took no money whatsoever, and immigration got wind, i.e. someone that normally works on other people's land for three or four hundred baht a day, if they reported me, I could get deported. Okay, that actually happened. And basically, you're doing a Thai person out of a day's wages. You could say the same thing about working on your own land, couldn't you? But you're helping your wife. The phrase that has been said to us several occasions by different um, officers in immigration is what the hell do people think Falang are supposed to do if we don't let them do anything no one's going to want to come and stay in Thailand if we don't let them do anything because this is when I I mentioned well got to to mention um, about you know you're painting your house you, you're fixing some wiring you're doing some plumbing and they were just laughing they were like just go ahead and do it now, we're not on about going into someone else's house and helping them with their electrics or plumbing. Okay, that's different. You're on your wife's property, your wife's land, you're not taking any money. If someone's bringing their tractor to your house and you're going to do a bit of spot welding for them or you're going to strip their engine down for them, that is working, guys. Yeah, that is not helping your wife. I know it's a bit... It feels a bit sad doesn't it you can't go and help someone else out now we do help people you know we'll give them a lift here and there and that sort of thing you could take it to the nth degree well he's doing a motorbike taxi out of a job let's get real guys there's so much scaremongery on the internet it's it's a bloody joke and to be quite honest a lot of the people that are, are giving this incorrect advice are people that have never lived in thailand or they are living in thailand and they've had a few bad experiences and they're bitter or they're jealous of you 
just get on your land and uh, get busy. Don't use it as an excuse just to sit down drinking beer all day and then be bitter and twisted on the internet. There's enough people like that anyway. You don't need an excuse to have a beer at night, guys. The excuse I have for having a beer at night is because I've been helping my wife. Okay, so uh, another bit with, that we can bolt onto this is, uh, and this is sort of like geared towards uh, our fellow rural life guys uh, on, on the Facebook. Let's go through here. Uh, and that is people that are doing homestays and farm stays and uh, bed and breakfast, little resorts, that sort of thing. Now I'm not going to get involved on, on uh, I can't get up my bloody side. Don't help then clock, will you? Fucking dog. Okay, let's go with homestays first because that'll probably apply to more people than farm stays. Um, you can help your missus. Uh, the emphasis on homestays is if you have a Farang staying with you for more than 24 hours, you have to notify immigration or your wife has to notify immigration because she's the property owner. Okay, so within 24 hours, she has to submit a notification to the immigration office that uh, Joe Bloggs from America or the UK is staying at their property. If they don't, and they get wind of it and you get reported or they do a spot check and you've got a visitor there uh, your missus can get fined up to 10,000 baht so the you can't get in trouble but of course that 10,000 baht may be a bit of an issue for you now how do you register them or notify them to start off with you may well have to go to immigration so this has been a this is a potential stumbling block for us if you wanted to come and visit us for say 36 hours. Toons then got to drive 50 minutes uh, on a dangerous road to immigration and register your stay. Uh, so that won't be happening guys. Uh, you can do it online but it's at the discretion of who's in charge of that actual immigration office. So you have to do it first, send all your information off so you'll need a, uh, to scan the, uh, the passport details in and your, your tourist visa or, or whatever visa you're on in Thailand and submit it that way and then they'll either say yes or no um, know that you can't I don't mean know that you can't stay but know that it might not be acceptable to do it online and then your missus might have to go there so we haven't had anyone stay here at the moment apart from a mum so we had to go and pay a visit that way but you may well have to do that uh, initially. So that, that will vary from, from office to office. Let's say it's the, the head of office that makes that decision. Farm stay, same sort of thing, exactly the same thing, you have to report that. But a farm stay, most farm stays, let the visitor or customer actually do work on the farm. Now, when I say work, they're doing the tasks that you would be doing, but they're not married to your missus, are they? So how's that allowed? They are experiencing Thai culture. Now I'm not, what you don't want to be doing is getting someone stay for two weeks and then basically harvest rice for you flat out for two weeks. That is work, guys. They're having a basher. They're feeding the ducks one day. They're uh, feeding the fish now and again. Uh, they might help you sow some rice. Uh, I, personally, I'd get them to do all the bloody weed killing spraying and chemicals and all that sort of thing. It's far too dangerous for you. So they're sampling Thai farm lifestyle. Thailand are so proud in general of the real Thai life, you know, traditional Thai living. They want us to sample that, to experience it. They want to show us that sort of thing. For us in the future, we ultimately are looking to, to get uh, two or three basic accommodations built and available for, for doing farm stay. Uh, we're not really into sharing our, our house. So um, once you start building 
other abodes on your property and renting those out of course you'll need a business paper uh, you need to register your business but you can still help out guys uh, just don't take the money from your visitors doing this video is going to cause a bit i wouldn't say an uproar we're not big enough to cause uproars i don't think well maybe a few years ago i did um but you're still going to get these people out there saying this bloke is talking absolute toff the law says this the law says that guys this is why back in the uk when you teach law so on our courses you teach the law and then you teach acops which was approved code of practice you would teach um hsgs health and safety guidance practitioners notes this helps you understand how the law is applied what you'll get these people just taking one sentence or one paragraph out of a whole publication it's a you can't do this guys you're missing out over the last couple of years there must have been about 20 or 30 guys asked me Lee, how do you do it? How, how can you do this? And then, I'd love to do this, but I'm worried about immigration. I've always said, look, go to immigration, be very, very specific. Tell them everything that you fancy doing and they'll tell you straight away. I don't know why people are so scared or apprehensive about asking the, the your authority. It's not like you're gonna go on a blacklist. Oh, this bloke came in and started asking whether he could, uh, start doing some uh, some weeding around his house or he was going to grow some eucalyptus or bloody hell we, we let's get him on the list and then we'll just come and do a spot check tell them exactly guys what you want to do and they will tell you exactly straight away uh what you can and can't do okay so the eye opener for me was don't go on someone else's land and help them out i know it sounds horrible but you've got to be careful you you will get some variation of what you're told exactly the same as when i did the uh, visa renewal application but the main bones of it remains the same and if it doesn't for you then yeah that 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 is a shame but just take on board what they've said and uh, just adhere to it there's loads of people out there with loads of good advice. Um, mine might not be the best advice, guys, in your opinion, and that's fine. I've got no issue with that. But I'll tell you what, this has come from immigration. <clears throat> and if you don't take their advice, then you're asking for bloody trouble. Or you're living a life that is falling well short of what you could potentially be able to do. Okay, You can grow loads of weeds like us. You can forget to water your palm for a week. Um, you're missing out. Let's give the uh, tile authorities a little bit of credit, for heaven's sake, guys. There's so much bloody tie bashing that's going on. It's it's just it's farcical. Now I'm not. I haven't gone native. Don't think that for one minute. I know that there's loads of things that are uh, that aren't great out here. But uh, you get some people that have just gone absolutely anti, and, and, and again, I don't know whether it's, it's jealousy, frustration, um, or they've, they've had a bad experience. What the officers also said was, if someone comes to your land in a supposedly official capacity, questioning what you're doing, ring immigration immediately. Okay, just on the slim off chance that someone has said anything or reported or there's a scam going on, um, you make sure that you've got that phone number available and you ring that immigration office straight away. Okay, because your normal police that you see in the street have to notify immigration police. You know their phrase, bad guys out, good guys in, or is it the other way around? I don't know. They do stick to it. So if you're a good guy and you haven't been doing anything wrong, um, 
then all will be good. So if you're not aware of your immigration phone number, make a note of it, stick it in your phone guide. If they turn up and you've been doing something that they said you shouldn't do, uh, then, they, then they won't be helping you, of course. Uh, but that, that's, your, that's your problem. So there you go. It's, uh, I've had a nice stroll. Um, I really do hope that um, it, it's clarified a few things, guys. I know I ramble on. I, I get told that quite a lot these days. Um, and some of these videos, they're a, they're a broader subject than we normally do, just staying on the farm. So it, we have been attracting some some negative bits and bobs on YouTube. If it, by the way, if you see anything like that, um, can you just ignore it, guys? Uh, and then I, I used to entertain these sort of people, but we're, we're just blocking them now. I haven't I haven't got the time. Sometimes it's fun um, interacting or attempting to interact with these people and. Um, trying to trying to explain your side of things but I, I've just run out of uh, I've just lost the will to live speaking to these people so they, they're just all gradually getting blocked now and they can carry on setting up their false false profiles so if you could do us a favor um, just ignore them that, that'll be that'll be appreciated okay if you're if you still doubt me guys uh, perhaps when you you go and speak to your own immigration officer, then you can uh, you can realise I'm, I'm only trying to trying to help you. Um, I'd hate for anyone to be missing out on a on a life like this um, when when you are actually allowed to to uh, live a, a a hard life on the farm, um, but enjoyable. You might you might think, great, I can now work on my farm, and then after six months, you think I'm a broken man. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get some people in to do all the work and that's that's fine as well isn't it that's it then guys thanks as always for watching and oh my god Klopp's gone on Toon's Chile Island I've just seen him jump across he's obviously gone on there and now can't find his way back he's he's gone on from over there he's gone through the through the jungle and is now on Toons Team Chile Island. He, he's going to be out here all day. He's about as much use as a chocolate teapot, that boy. Bloody cormoran. A quick summary in case you've forgotten while I've been bloody blaring. Make sure that you're married. That's quite an easy one, though. Uh, finding the right woman might not be so easy. Uh, make sure that you're on your land or in your own property. And it's classed as helping your wife. <clears throat> Do not accept money in exchange for any service or product. <clears throat> Do not go on anyone else's land and work whether or not you're taking money, even if it's to help out, just be aware guys, that guy is apparently working for nothing on a, on a neighbour's farm, uh, someone, in, someone informed him and now he's no longer in the country. That was not off the internet, that was a real life example given by the immigration office. And that's it, if you have someone come to stay for more than 24 hours, go and inform them, notification of stay is it of an alien? Possibly. Let's just say Falang. If you don't, and they pay you a visit, or you get reported, your missus may well get fined 10,000 baht. You might have to go and report yourself of notification of stay, uh, but get on the website. Uh, you just go to your actual um, website for your immigration office of your province, and try to register on there. Uh, once you've been accepted on there, that you can then do it every single time after that. I imagine if you've got like a little resort set up um, and you've got that registered, I think that would help you. But that's just my Baz Lohman opinion. Right guys, I think that's it, isn't it? Only took three and a half hours to record that. Um, 
the sun's coming up nice the sun's got a bit of heat in it now uh, hopefully my missus has rustled me up a lovely breakfast I'm just off to let me ducks out am I working I'm helping my wife bye bye